I want to talk to you about suicide. Um, it is a serious um, public health concern. Every year, over 800,000 um, people around the world die by suicide. And in the United States alone, there's more than 1.4 million suicide attempts that occur um, every year. This is two suicide attempts every minute. I did the math, and um, I couldn't believe this. Um, so this is a problem. Now, the clinical decision uh, predicting suicide is um, really challenging. The clinical decision um, is about balancing out uh, risk factors and protective factors, such as um, previous trauma, bullying, um, social support, which is a protective factor, um, and like social isolation or financial or personal loss. And um, this clinical decision is very subjective, and it could be a very imperfect process. Also, um, patients, um, self-assessments made by patients could also be misleading. So predicting suicide can be very difficult. Now, way um, much later in my life in college, I learned that the environment could um, influence um, the brain, and then our brain shapes behavior. And our brain is constantly active uh, with our environment, and um, so a lot of these uh, risk factors and protective factors um, ha have real um, concrete biological um, connections to the brain. As a neuroscientist, I aim to examine um, these um, biological characteristics that could be associated with risk for suicidal behavior. So in our lab, uh, we use neuroimaging um, in, um, to both uh, scan and look at research participant brains. And this is actually um, a picture of my brain um, during one of our practice scans. And um, you know, specifically with magnetic resonance imaging, we are able to look at the structural, physical parts of the brain. And with that, we could try to see if the structural differences affect some of the functional impairments that we see in cognitive decisions and reasoning, mood impairments, and emotional dysregulations that are associated with suicidal risk. Uh, we first wanted to see um, uh, differences in individuals who've had previous suicide attempts and compared to those individuals who've only had suicidal thoughts but did not have previous suicide attempts. Now, we see, uh, we found differences in the thalamus of um, previous suicide attempts. And this region is very centrally located in the brain and has many different connections to many different parts of the brain. And um, it serves um, to uh, relay sensory and movement information. And it also sends information to the limbic region, which we all know um, that is part of emotion regulation and memory. And it also sends um, information to the frontal part of the brain, which is more for cognitive reasoning and decision making and impulse control. We also found differences in the nucleus incumbens, and this region is, um, is kind of a critical part in the reward pathway, and it has uh, functions for both reward and avoidant behaviors, and it also forms both positive and negative memories. Okay. So then we really wanted to see um, differences in individuals who've had previous suicide attempts versus acute suicide risk. So we compared individuals with both previous suicide attempts for uh, more than six months ago and compared them to individuals who've had uh, suicide attempts uh, within the past three days. We found differences in the hippocampus. And now this region is very sensitive to acute changes in our environment. And um, this region is also um, very interactive with the limbic region and frontal areas. And other studies have shown that um, recent negative and uh, stressful life events are closely tied to suicidal thoughts and behaviors. So now we know that um, by looking into the living brain, we can look at the suicidal mind in a more objective and um, you know, deeper understanding. And uh, my next aim of this, uh, the goal is to look at the functional kind of processes I mentioned before with emotion and cognitive impairment, kind of map that onto the structural differences that we see. Um, I'm excited to continue collaborating with other physicians and patients and researchers to really have an integrative understanding of the suicidal brain. And with more understanding, 
I think that um, it's very encouraging um, that we could find um, quickly advanced, um, quickly advanced uh, suicide intervention for um, prevention of suicide. Thank you.